morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning and welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome back to another episode of your favorite female centric program, Up You with Ezine. How you all doing? <laughs> welcome. Yes, this is a program where you, we bring you insightful conversations on empowering women to find themselves and live in purpose. Today we have an important topic to discuss, cervical cancer. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and this year's theme is Learn, Prevent, Screen, which we have borrowed and converted to a call to action. And also the topic for today's discussion, which is Woman, Learn, Prevent, Screen for Cervical Cancer. How are you all doing, everyone? It's a beautiful day out here in Lagos, Nigeria, and I hope it's the same for you wherever you are. It's up here with AZ and I'm here to keep you company, as usual. So let's do this, my beautiful people, finding self, finding purpose. My name is AZ Kufre Ekanem, and I'm your host. It's great to be here, I must tell you, and tackle this crucial issue today. As always, I'm thrilled to have you on this program. I'm thrilled to have you join us. It's still recalibration season in here. And today our topic is learn, prevent, and screen for cervical cancer. Before we dive into the topic proper, let's start with some important facts about cervical cancer. Did you know that is one of the most preventable and treatable forms of cancer if detected early? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, even with advancement in medical technology, cervical cancer still poses a significant threat to women around the world. But with education and early screening, we can take steps to educate a populace of women to reduce its impact. And that's why we're having this conversation today. Our focus will be threefold. Learning about cervical cancer, preventing it, and discussing the importance of regular screenings. Be kind to follow us on all our social media platforms at Up You With Ezine on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and also Twitter, or the X space. We'd love to connect with you and keep the conversation going long after this live episode has ended. And please, as you come in, like and share this stream. You will not only be helping another woman, but it's one way you help our ministry so that we can continue to serve you better. The topic today is woman learn, prevent, screen for cervical cancer. May I remind you that all episodes of Up You With Ezine are now on our YouTube and podcast channels at Up You With Ezine. Be sure to follow and don't you miss a thing. Cervical cancer is the second leading cancer affecting women in Nigeria, coming right after breast cancer. Uh, because it's so easy to contact it through multiple sources. However, it's also highly preventable. That's the good news we bring to you today and every day. It is also highly present, uh, preventable. But sadly, many people do not know that they have contracted this virus and end up passing it to other people. This year, 2024, the Cervical Health Awareness Month team is Learn, Prevent, Screen. We believe that if more people are made aware of this disease and how to prevent or treat it, everyone will be safer. And that's why we're having this conversation today, to create awareness and get more women to screen and possibly go on preventive measures, such that eventually there'll be one less cancer in the world to worry about. We certainly believe that if more people are made aware of the disease and how to prevent it and treat it, everyone will be safer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Remember, 
like this stream, share this stream as we get ready to bring up our guest for today. If you're just joining us, this is Opie with Ezine, and the topic on the banner is Woman, Learn, Prevent, and Screen for Cervical Cancer. Woman, Learn, Prevent, and Screen for Cervical Cancer. Now it's time to bring up our guest for today. And our guest today is Dr. Tewa Onosaya, an entrepreneur and philanthropist with over 20 years experience, a publisher, author, and mindset stylist. Hmm, I like that. She holds a BSc in pharmacology from the University of Portsmouth, UK, and a diploma in fashion journalism from the College of Media and Publishing, UK, a certificate in mindfulness from Udemy, she is a certified law of attraction practitioner, another one that I like. Her distinguished fellow and honorary doctorate of philosophy in leadership and performance management is from the Institute of Leadership, Manpower and Management Development. Tewa is the founder of Esquit Magazine, a fashion, wellness and lifestyle magazine for the unlimited woman. Execute Magazine organizes the Execute Magazine Awareness for Cancer events, which include the EMAP, Smear It, Walks, and Smarathon events, aimed at increasing the awareness for cervical cancer prevention and free screening for people. In 2019, Execute Magazine started an only female awards ceremony called the Execute Lady of the Year Eloy Awards and conference aimed at sustaining women empowerment by celebrating and empowering women of excellence in different fields. The Eloy Foundation was created to sustain women empowerment through access to mentors, affordable finance, trainings, grants, and more to help build and sustain their businesses. This is done through the Eloy Foundation Sustainable Empowerment Program. SEP and the Eloy Foundation Network. Dr. Tewa's mentoring experience has been on the Cherry Blair Foundation UK Gambia, helped to grow by Enterprise Nation UK, First City Monument Bank Nigeria, the Eloy Awards Foundation Nigeria, SME 100 Nigeria, to mention a few. She has been featured in numerous international and Nigerian media, which include the CNN, BBC, New York Times, Wikipedia, Punch, Guardian, Disney, Vanguard, and lots more. Television and radio stations, of course, she's won several awards internationally and in Nigeria. Tawa is passionate about empowering, inspiring, and motivating people to be the best version of themselves. She's also a mindset stylist, and the author of the best-selling book, Rule Your Mind. How to rule your mind to live the life you desire intentionally and orders. Tawa is married and blessed with children. Dear listeners, <laughs> everyone, please join me in welcoming this phenomenal <laughs> guest that we have today. Good morning, Tewa. How are you? <laughs> Great morning. I'm very blessed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, as I was reading that thing, CNN, BBC, New York Times, da, da, da. It, it was so good. I, I, you know, some people say, my people say shutting it. I say shutting what? Man, we are reading the stuff. They need to know. <laughs> First thank all, you so friend. much. You're welcome. <laughs> thank my you so much. My question to you, the very first one, <laughs> is how do you put it together? It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. And the funniest thing is that's even my short bio. So when you were reading, I'm like, huh? Are we talking about me? Is that the same person? <laughs> Oh, what, it's what I, <laughs> it's Hello, gone. world. Did you hear that? She says that's the short version. You know, what I just read is the short version. So if we ever get to see the long one, the unabridged, only God knows what it's going to look like. Wow. wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's God. It's God. And um, I'm also going to say that the fact that I enjoy every single thing that I do doesn't make it look like a lot of work. I mean, yes, it is work, but, you know, I'm so blessed to enjoy what I do. So it doesn't seem like too much work, but yeah. <laughs> You're actually definitely a poster card for 
you know, love what you do and then you wouldn't need to work a day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you are definitely a poster card for that. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you're just joining us, this is up here with AZ Nia. The topic on the burner is women learn, prevent, screen for cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, so are you ready? Yes, I am. I am ready. <laughs> Great. So naturally, my first question would be, what is cervical cancer? Hmm. Why is it important for women to know about it? About it. Right. So cervical cancer is the cancer of the cervix. And the cervix is um, it's like the, um, the best way to describe it is to call it the neck of the womb. So imagine a funnel. I was going to bring a funnel, but I forgot. So imagine a funnel. You know the way a funnel is? And then mm -hmm. the bottom of it, that round mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so imagine the funnel being the womb. And then the round part of it at the bottom of it, at that long thing, that is the cervix. That's the neck of the womb. And um, every woman, every woman, and I must say this because we've we've um, done it. We've done a survey before in different um, institutions where mm -hmm. we've talked about the cervix, and some women are like, "Oh, I'm a woman. Do I have a cervix?" Every woman has a cervix. Are you yes. joking? Yes. It would be women actually said, "Do I have a yes. cervix?" Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. There's yes. a lot to be done. Yes. So there is a lot to know. There's a lot of awareness that needs to go, you know, that needs to be out there. So the cervix is the neck of the womb. So when sexual um, sexual intercourse is being, you know, it's being had, the cervix is what, you know, gets hit when, you know, once um, I'm looking for a political, <laughs> a nice way to intercourse. <laughs> penetration when that is going on so the cervix is what is usually being hit in the you know once that um once intercourse is going on so cervical cancer is the cancer of that of that part of of women and um it's a form of cancer that like you've rightly said is 100 percent preventable but we have one woman one woman an hour dying from it in nigeria which is unacceptable for a form of cancer that is preventable so that in a, you know, in a brief nutshell, you know, layman explanation is cervical cancer, the, can the cancer of the cervix. The cervix is the neck of the womb and every woman has a cervix. No, 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 no. Please make this make sense. We have one woman dying an hour in Nigeria. Yeah. Make it make sense, please. Yeah. One woman dies every hour in Nigeria, according to the WHO research. And that number hasn't gone down in, you know, gazillion in, in years. It hasn't gone down. And um, it's it's even it's even more um it's it's more distressing because it's a form of cancer that is preventable. But people are just not aware. And um, people that, even the people that are aware aren't getting screened. If we do a poll right now and say out there that, you know, how many of you have been screened for cervical cancer ever? You, the results are gonna be staggering. You are going to be amazed at the, you know, at the number of women who have never been screened. And if you say, okay, if you've been screened, yeah, good, you know, good on you. When last was your, was your screening test? Some might tell you years ago. Some might tell you that, you know, yeah, they're meant to go in, but they haven't gone in. People are not taking this form of cancer very seriously. And it needs to be known. Look at it. It's January. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. If this was October, won't you be seeing breast cancer this, breast cancer that, pink this, pink that? Won't you be seeing that everywhere? But with cervical cancer, because the awareness is very, very low, you're not seeing that. This is not to say that breast cancer is not killing as many women, if not more, actually more women, actually. But, you know, if there's a, if there's a way to you know worry about one less cancer, why not? Why don't we do it? Why don't we just go out there? Which is why we're always on hand to talk about cervical cancer, raise more awareness, let people know that they have a choice. They can do something about it. Okay, great. You know, maybe um, hmm, there is a lot we need to do. Awareness, education is is very important. And so yeah. let's even start doing that right away. Uh -huh. Could you please tell us eh, the common risk factors associated with cervical cancer? Cancer, right. Okay. okay. So the first one. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Go yeah, ahead. So the first one I'm going to say, risk factor. First one, first one, first one is having multiple sexual partners. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know, the HPV virus, which causes cervical cancer, HPV is human papilloma virus. The HPV mm -hmm. virus that causes um, cervical cancer lives harmlessly in men. But once certain strains get in contact with the woman's cervix, that's when the cervix start having abnormal changes. So having multiple sexual partners means that the person is being exposed to different strains of HPV virus with different mm -hmm. men that you've been with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is one that I would say, I mean, yes, it's all well and good to have fun when you're young and blah, 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 but limit the sexual partners that you have. Another thing is, you know, even if you are, you know, a dedicated wife, so to speak, you know, you're not doing anything, you know, you're married now, you have one husband and blah, blah, blah. You don't know how many people the, you know, God forbid, but the man has, you know, is being with. And each woman has a history of being with different, you know, another man. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You're married to a hug to your husband. The husband has, um, you know, uh, another affair. And then the woman he's having an affair with has been with other men before. You know, those are all the kind of things that come into play, which is why we have to be very careful and also be getting screened regularly. Another risk factor is, you know, ladies being exposed to sex at a very young age. I'm talking about, you know, God forbid, people who have probably been abused when they were younger. You know, we hear stories of people, you know, um, 10 year olds, 12 year olds being, being abused by somebody around them. This is, you know, early exposure to sex. Another risk factor is smoking. Some people think smoking is cool, but really and truly, I mean, you know, aside from cervical cancer, there are other things that smoking is doing to the body as well. So that's a risk factor. Another risk factor is, um, High parity, and when I say high parity, I mean the number of births you've had, vaginal births you've had, yeah, because the cervix has been expanded and contracted, expanded, contracted, you know, it's, it's going to cause abnormal changes within the cervix. All of these are preventable. All of these, you know, if, if regular screening is being done, it can be checked. Another risk, risk factor is, um, I wrote it down, is um, starting to have children at a very young age. You know, we have people who, um, and I'm not talking about 20s, I'm talking about people maybe in 17, 18, you know, in their teenage years, having children. Those are risk factors as well. All of these are the things that, you know, could potentially cause the cervix to start growing abnormal cells. And another thing I must mention is STI sexually transmitted um, infections, like chlamydia, especially. You know, some people have chlamydia, they're not getting it treated. Maybe they're scared or they're shy or, you know, they don't want to take medicine. But all of these, ST, you know, STIs like um, chlamydia that stays in the body for so long starts getting the cervix to abnormally grow cells that are not necessarily supposed to be in the body. And then, you know, people that are immunocompre immunocompromised, you know, maybe HIV, or, or something. Those are the different kind of risk factors associated with cervical cancer. Whoa, whoa, that's a lot. No wonder he said that you could get it from multiple sources. Yes. Now, but you see, the thing is, in the olden days, our mothers had nine children, <laughs> 11 children. Where I come from, for instance, um, there's a particular um, um, community Mm -hmm. that when you have like nine children or 11 children, they even do a ceremony for you and kill a goat and oh, then wow. give you some very special gifts. Yes, because wow. you've proven your femininity, you're a woman. I mean, you had 11 solid children. But in, in their time, we didn't hear this cervical cancer, you know. And then yes. now that we're having one, two, three, cervical cancer is everywhere. Is there something we're missing? You know what? Maybe there is something we're missing. Number one, I would say, you know, during those days, how many women had that, you know, that um, that boldness to be with more than one man? <laughs> to be honest, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm just hypothetical. No, no, you you, you just hit it on the head. <laughs> You just hit it on the head. Speaking here, our know, fidelity in these days is to be is questionable. It is yeah? questionable. And it you is know, questionable. they have very fun names for it now. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's called being woke. Being so woke. You're, you're being woke and you're actually woking yourself closer to your death, you know. So know, we right? need to be we need to be yeah. careful. 
Yeah, it is questionable. And then, then again, maybe, you know, as part of, you know, another way to, to put being woke is maybe, you know, in those days, we didn't know about all these diseases then. So if women were dying of it then, it probably wasn't common knowledge because, you know, no medical screening was being done. Nothing was being taken into account then. So it could be different things. I mean, hypothetically speaking, but if you were to look at it, the first thing that comes to my mind, because men are the carriers of the HPV virus, is because, you know, then women stick to one partner. Very valid point. And I've actually learned something right now. I've learned that it's men that are carriers of the HPV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know that before now. So I'm yeah. sure that women, somebody is learning something. Uh, yeah. Yes, of course, someone is learning something because I can see someone at the bio, Janet, good morning. She says cervical cancer awareness is highly necessary. Yeah. Good. Okay, so um, Chaba, let's go on. Yes. So apart from what we're doing now, mm. how can women educate themselves about cervical cancer prevention and screening? Hmm. Women need to be aware. They need to be aware, first aware of themselves, their bodies, and they need to do research. Women need to, you know, do research and ask questions as well. A lot of women, you know, sometimes, I say sometimes, including myself, are shy to talk about things that, you know, as regards to their bodies, because you don't want to be speaking to a doctor, you don't want to expose yourself, you don't want to do this. But then again, I always, always say this, that if it's for a greater good of you being healthy, go for it. We need to be, you know, we need to be learning about different things about the body. We need to be, you know, asking our doctors questions. We need to be aware of our bodies. If there's any changes in our bodies, we need to be aware of it. And we just need to also be our sister's keepers telling everybody about it. The color of cervical cancer is teal. And we put that teal. Teal is, you know, almost like um borderline green and blue nobody not many people know that there's a color for cervical cancer awareness but it is teal and then at imac our, our, our foundation we have um acronym teal to mean tell every awesome lady about cervical mm. cancer tell every woman in your life tell everyone about cervical cancer so it's being aware and it's also taking your you know loving yourself enough to do all the different tests that you're supposed to do when you get to a certain age Screening is important. The reason we say that cervical cancer is 100% preventable is because when you're screening regularly, yeah, cervical cancer is one of the few cancers that has a pre-stage. Pre-stage, I mean, how blessed are we? Pre-stage, pre-stage meaning before it becomes cancer. The cells will be, you know, will be growing abnormally before it becomes cancer. And when you're aware of the different tests you need to be, you need to be doing, and you're regularly going for your screening, if there's any abnormal growth in your in the cervix, it will be noticed. And guess what? It can be treated. Yes, treatment is a little bit expensive. And when I say a little bit expensive, maybe where, you know, um, last year it was about 40,000. Maybe it's a little bit increased now, but that's pre-cancer cells. We're not talking about full-blown cancer where the person will now need chemotherapy or radiotherapy, things like that. So we just need to be aware and love yourself enough to say, okay, you know what? Let me go for my yearly screening or, you know, three yearly screening, which depends on whichever type you do. We need to be aware and we need to be our sisters keepers and raise that awareness as well and join organizations who are doing it. You know, as we were speaking, um, this our phrase, woman yes. supporting woman, just yes. kept running around in my head because this head. is one thing or one area where mm. women should actively support women. Yep. Um, I, I don't understand how you have friends or how you have sisters mm -hmm. and you discuss everything from fashion to holidays to making money to events and whatnot and you don't discuss your health mm -hmm. as women i recall that sometime on this show we talked about menopause it was right. amazing the kind of calls that we got People didn't even understand what menopause was and what the signs and symptoms of menopause 
is what to look out for and how to mm -hmm. help themselves i mean it's like a taboo you don't talk about them then you don't you're not doing life with those friends you're not really doing sisterhood you're not supporting each other each so, other dr tawa said yes i know it's a sexually transmitted something and then they're going to be looking at you like you know what maybe you're sleeping around or something but you see what they talk about you talk about you pata, pata, it's one week it's all done but you'll be yeah. alive yeah mm -hmm. so it's best for you to go tell another woman i feel this way or i feel that way or i have never done a test before or do you know anything about what they're talking about what is cervical cancer what should i know point me in the direction that i should go and i think every woman on this stream today and including those who will come to watch later make mm. sure you have the discussion with one more woman one man mm -hmm. At yeah. today at least one woman just it you know go and say have you heard about cervical cancer we still mm -hmm. have a few days left in january drum up awareness if you tell one woman who tells one woman exactly ah, we will we will be making progress and yeah. on that note i'm going to ask every woman here on the stream now share the link one woman on your timeline will get in here now and hear this thing that can save one life mm -hmm. and more straight from the horse's mouth it's not yeah. every day you get dr tewa or nasaya to be on a show and if she's coming here today you can be sure that is some wisdom that we're all going to be hearing so share the stream get your best friends in here yeah. Our bestie, 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 prove it today. I know, right? Exactly. Bring them, bring them in here to exactly. come and hear the message of life. Because yeah. every woman has a cervix. Every woman every has a cervix. Every woman has yes, a cervix. And can I just add that even if you have one partner, don't think that, oh, you're, you know, you're safe and blah, blah, blah. Remember, your partner may have other partners that you do not know about. You do not know about, yeah. And that your partner could be carrying the strain that will affect your cervix. So you still need to be getting screened regularly. It's important. If you are, if you are a woman, you're sexually active, get screened get screened get screened i always say this as well that what is five minutes of discomfort compared to you know when the person now gets ill or has cancer mm -hmm. and then has mm -hmm. to live with it mm -hmm. you know okay great so now that brings me to ask you could you please talk to us about um cervical cancer screening methods why we have to how off the whole the whole shebang Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. So the most popular um, form of screening is the pap smear. And mm -hmm. um, most um, developed countries, you know, the UK, America, you know, part of Europe, most of the developed countries offer, even in Nigeria, actually, um, offer pap smears. And pap smears is just, you know, going, um, a nurse, a trained nurse going into the cervix, taking some sample cells from the cervix, and then now they take it to the lab, um, look through it to see if there are any abnormal cells growing on the cervix. Now, the pap smear can be done every three years. That can be done every three years. And once you, so I always say this, that yes, they say, you know, pap smear you can do from the age of about 20, 21 or 24, you know, and then every, every three years. I always say that, you know, you don't know when somebody becomes sexually active. Nowadays, 18 year olds are sexually active. Nowadays, you know, 20, okay, 20 is good. <laughs> You're, you're even generous when you say 18 year old. You'd be amazed that it's a lot, lot earlier than that. A, 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 earlier than that. Can you imagine? So, you know, these, these, as long as you're sexually active, you've had some form of contact with HPV. Yes, when you're younger, the, the body is able to, you know, to flush it out. But then again, you never know. So once you're sexually active, ask your doctor about cervical cancer screening. So they can either do the pap smear or there's another one called um, cytology, liquid-based cytology. The liquid-based cytology, although, yeah, you know, when ladies are older, 24, um, 24 upwards, um, you know, that is also taking sample, then putting the sample in a liquid, um, in a liquid, in a fluid to check the, the different um, discoloration or, you know, abnormal cells going around the cervix. And then the third one, which is what we usually do because it's easy to do and it's cheaper and you can do it in a mass scale, 
is the VIA method. The VIA method is visual inspection using acetic acid. And now, so the, with the two tests I mentioned earlier, with the pap smear and the cytology, they would need to take the samples, take it to the lab, now check, you know, if anything is, is um, growing abnormally and, you know, things like that. But with the VIA, um, once the acetic acid is injected into the cervix, once there's a discoloration with that, you can tell if it's positive for precancer cells or negative for pre for precancer cells. And like I said earlier, we do that um, when we do our free screening outreach because it's cheaper. And you can tell there and then if there's an abnormal change. Now, if there's an abnormal change, we now advise um, any woman that has an abnormal change to now go for the pap smear which is, you know, more in, in depth, where they can see more things that is going on with the cervix. And if they're precancer cells, now we can talk about, you know, treatment for precancer cells and things like that. Another um, screening method um, is to get um, HPV testing. You know, I said earlier that there are different strains of HPVs um, that are flying about. The ones that cause the cervical cancer is, um, I think, 16 and 18. Yes, yeah, 16 and 18. And you never know which strain. So it's, you know, if, if, you, if people can afford it, it would be good to get HPV tested. And this is testing the DNA to see if they're, you know, the, if the virus is within the DNA. So usually, pap smear, three years. If you're doing the VIA because, you know, it's what you can, you have access to, is what you can afford, that is every year. Every year. VIA method every year. Liquid-based cytology every five years because that's more in-depth. In every five years. HPV testing as well, every five years, you know. And the reason why, so a lot of people say, okay, I've been screened. Why do I need to go, you know, get screened every year or every three years? The reason is because cervical cancer has a, an incubation period of 10 to, um, we, I say seven to 10 years. Some people might say, you know, 20 years, but I, I prefer to say seven to 10 years. And the reason is because you know, once the cervix comes in contact with the, once the HPV virus comes in contact with the cervix, it would not become cancer or even grow precancer cells immediately. It grows over time, over time. That is why we say go and get screened. Because if we didn't catch it three years ago, it might be caught now. If we didn't catch it one year ago, it might be caught now. So you have to be religious about getting screened. If it's a five-year one you did, yes. And you need to be, as long as you're sexually active, even if you stopped having sex, even if you stopped having sex 10 years ago, go and get screened because you don't know what kind of strain you have been exposed to that will now show up 10 years later. The only time you stop screening is when you're 65 and above. And that's because the test you had previously was normal. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes, interesting. Let me try and break it down so you can know that you can be sure that we're following you. <laughs> so apparently, this virus, the HPV, yeah. is a virus that doesn't that incubates over a long period of time inside yep. a woman's yep. cervix. Yeah, inside a woman's body. Yeah. So if you if you get it today, that's assuming you have sex today, and is the man is a carrier. Oh, inside, yes, he's a carrier, and he deposits it inside of you. You are not going to become a cancer carrier tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You could incubate between that time and three years, or five years, or ten years, depending on other factors peculiar to you. Exactly. as a woman exactly. and that's why you must keep doing what text testing can you imagine that you you got this thing and then it's just there growing inside of you you're not testing three years okay. three years passes you didn't test you don't know it goes to five years you didn't test you don't know and then at the tenth year that's when you find out that's rather mm -hmm. late yeah so why don't you test every three years mm -hmm. if you choose to do the pap smear or you test every year if you choose to do the what's the name of that one? Yeah, the visual EIA. Yeah. EIA. Mm -hmm. Or you test you go do the HPV 
test itself and prove the DNA of what's gone inside of you. Mm -hmm. I think this is a cancer that is kind if there's such a thing like that. I know. Because, because it allows you time to find it. Exactly. Because it realizes, in my opinion, that you're not the one that gave it to yourself. <laughs> so it gives you time. That's a good way to it. look at it. Yeah, it gives you time to find it and talk it out of you. <laughs> and honestly, thank you. I'm, I'm learning and um, I, I believe the women and the men too are learning because there are some men on the stream. And I believe that these he for she's will go home and tell their exactly. spouses and their female friends that they should friends. please look out for their health. You know, this month we've just been talking about recalibrating. Mm. And so you need to also recalibrate your mind and the way you look at yourself, your health and your body. Yeah. And then it's best for you to be sure that you are fit enough to do the things you want to do. Because honestly, once it goes from um, being abnormal to becoming cancerous, that is the end of life for you. Mm -hmm. Because all you're going to be looking at, even if you do not die immediately, is on getting True well, friend. spending money, getting well, getting well. And you know, all sorts yeah. of things. Why don't you just prevent and be well? Yeah. Dr. Tewa, thank you so much. Now, I'm going mm -hmm. to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm aware that you have a program coming up soon. <laughs> um, can you tell us about it so that all of us can come and queue up and get free testing? <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. So, our foundation, IMAC Foundation, has a program coming up soon. Um, mm -hmm. We have different activities that we're currently doing in January to raise more awareness for cervical cancer. One of them includes the um, smear it challenge where we're asking people to smear their lipstick on their faces to depict the smear test to raise awareness. Another one is... Um, we're selling smeary bracelets. I thought I brought one down with me, but I didn't. Smeary bracelets that we're selling to raise more awareness and also raise funds for cervical cancer um, for free screening. And we are doing our own free screening on the 16th of February in Mushi, um, in um, Lagos State. Um, if you want to get free screening, please go to our Instagram page, which is at imac underscore cervical cancer foundation. And um, details are also going onto our website. Um, I believe between it should have gone between yesterday and today. Our website is www.smearitafrica.com. Smearit is S M E A R I T Africa.com. So details about cervical cancer. Our free screening happening on the 16th of um, February is on there. Um, if you go to the website as well, they're different. There's a list of different centers in Nigeria that do cervical cancer screening that you can go to wherever you are, Lagos, Abuja, or, um, Ilori, wh whichever state you're in, we have a list there. Now, I must say that, you know, there are different ways to prevent cervical cancer, screening being, you know, one of the first ones. And another one which, you know, we're encouraging even the mothers to do for their children is the vaccine. Um, I know you're going to... Before you go there, well, I'm, com so I'm, I'm, I'm coming that, yeah. there, you know? <laughs> That's, I'm really going there. So, um, first of all, I hope all of you heard all the locations and all she said. And mm -hmm. um, she forgot to tell us that there's a 50,000 naira to be won. I oh, know, yes. I, really, I really would like to win it. So I'm um, I'm actually um, smearing my face I'm right now. It. Fantastic. You know? So that way you cannot tell me that I did not join in. Wait, I'm smearing a, my a, face. There's, there's because terms and condition. There's terms I have, and condition. I have actually won all the terms and condition because I did my yeah. own on a global stage. Okay, um, I true. have smeared my face all for um, cervical cancer. Um, and because I love myself absolutely and I love my sisters and I want us to live purposefully and fulfill our destinies, I'm going to carry my face like this all of today. So anybody oh, wow. who needs to, who is wondering what this is all about, it is me oh, saying, nice. go get yourself tested. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think that Tawa and yes. her foundation are doing a great and awesome job. I, I think that they are Thank actually for doing, that. doing I love something that. really phenomenal. So please get on her Instagram page Tewa on Nasaya, or you get on Emac. We're going to put it yeah. down in the comment section later. And make sure that you go to the center closest to you and mm -hmm. get tested. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Thank you, Tawa, for all that you do for Very women. Very important. Very important. And thank you for that. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. So well, Stephanie, Stephanie Durosimieti is on the stream and she says she's learning a lot too. So that's yes, nice. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Please share the stream. Let's bring in more women in here and let's have this robust conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, Tawa, you yeah. carried me to somewhere I was skipping for much later, but let's go there. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's fine. Um, you know, um, when the vaccine came, there's been so mm -hmm. much talk about, oh, how they want to make us infertile, how they want to make our children infertile, how is a Bill Gates and Melinda Gates Foundation something, 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 and something, 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 something. I've even seen prophecies from yeah. men of God, men of God, saying, do not do this. So now, could you give us an unbiased professional feedback on this vaccination right so i don't know if it's if 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 it's going to be unbiased because i'm a cervical cancer prevention advocate <laughs> as honest so, as you can be <laughs> so i'm a cervical cancer prevention advocate any way to prevent cervical cancer any way to prevent people dying from cervical cancer i would go for it and, you know, a lot of people are skeptical about vaccines. But then again, vaccines have helped a lot. Should we talk about measles? Should we talk about bumps? Should we talk about, you know, when children are born, you know, the, the, the vaccination they, um, they, are, they, they um, recommend, you know, for, for their growth and to spare them from diseases? Should we talk about all of that? Even dogs need to get vaccinated for rabies because when they bite people, if they have rabies, that's something, you know, bad for human so there's always you know there's there are always people who will say vac vaccination is bad but i always you know say this and i ask them this question okay so if there's something to help you prevent something happening would you not do it if they say that okay you know let me cite an example of um maybe diabetes or high blood pressure or something and they say to you stop taking sugar Stop taking, you know, too much carb, Met, you know, have a balanced diet. Would you say, ah, no, because I love sugar, I'm going to keep eating it anyway. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because I feel like that's a form of immunization. That's a form of you preventing something from happening. Now, yes, there are, you know, there are different pharmaceutical companies that benefit from all of these, you know, all these nitty gritties, or, you know, all the science things behind it and the political things behind it and making money, but, you know, making money schemes behind it as well. But then again, it has been proven to reduce the deaths relating to cervical cancer. One woman every hour can be dying from something that is preventable. It doesn't and make sense. It doesn't make sense. And if we can, you know, reduce the number of deaths and even reduce the number of people that have cervical cancer in the first place, why won't we do that? I bet if they said that there's a vaccine for HIV, everybody will be running to get that. Oh, yes. I'll personally even take it. <laughs> exactly. Everyone will be running to get that. Now, there hasn't been so, uh, there hasn't been studies to suggest that it, you know, it causes infertility. So why not just take it? You know, we don't know how children can be exposed to sex. You, you could have a child, you know, that you think is innocent and blah, blah, blah. And somebody is abusing and the child can't even speak because they're scared. And then eventually they now have cervical cancer. If that child had been vaccinated when she was young, it would be one thing, you know, one less thing to worry about. I strongly believe that people need to go and do their own research and just not listen to, you know, the, the people they hold in high, high esteem, i.e. the pastors or, you know, or, or um, religious leaders. Just like your Bible, you have to go and learn your Bible yourself and don't rely on what you're being told because everybody has their own interpretation of the Bible. Everyone has their own interpretation of it. So I am of the school of thought that go and do your research. If you genuinely feel that you do, you know, this is not for you, all well and good, make sure you're getting screened. Make sure you're getting screened because you have to choose your heart. <laughs> yes, we certainly have to choose our heart. And it's, you know, the yes. conspiracy theory going on in the world right now is on an all time high. The media is becoming our own, we are all, we, we the media, we are becoming mm -hmm. our own albatros, you know, because what we disseminate 
uh, really sometimes um, does not help us yeah. in determining what we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, is I this this debate actually reminds me of when we were being asked to go and take the COVID um, vaccination. The COVID vaccine. You know, it's always going to be some for and some against. So, yeah. like Dr. Thomas oh. said, do your research. You know, and if you know that. Um, you can't afford to be doing this all the time, doing the test all the time, maybe because you your, your children are young or maybe because um, um, you forget for whatever reason, it might be in your own best interest to take the vaccination and so that you are preventing what you're supposed to prevent. You know, the way I look at it myself, I said, there are other ways of having children. Abby? Yeah. So even if it is to make one infertile, which I do not think it is, there are other ways of having children, but you mm. weigh and choose your heart yeah. and decide whether what you want to do is to die of um, something that you can actually prevent. prevent. I, I want to pray, I pray is, uh, Lord, please let me not have money um, and something that I, my money can solve for me will kill me. Is a prayer I pray every day, mm -hmm. so I don't know about um, any other person. You were going to say something, you know? Yeah, I was going to say that, and a lot of what we see out there is fear-based as well. Mm -hmm. Fear. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, we're always scared of the unknown. What because, oh, it's yet. never been this before, it's never been, and then, you know, that fear. But I would say, again, do your own research. If, you know, if you feel comfortable, go ahead. If you don't feel comfortable, okay, don't take it. But remember that you have to be getting screened. You have to be getting screened. You have to be getting screened. But the next question I'm going to ask you is, this is just one vaccine, right? Mm. But like you said earlier, there are different, different um, strain. strains of this HPV. So yeah. what strain really does this vaccine take care of? Take care of. So there are different vaccines, actually. There, um, there are some that you know that can take care of all the um, a, a good number of the of the different strains because I think there's one to eighteen, if I'm correct, of, um, yes, of I, HPV. I, 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 we're afraid of sixteen and eighteen. We're afraid of sixteen and eighteen specifically. Yeah. So there's um there's there are some vaccines that take care of almost all of them. There's some mm -hmm. that are specific to those two. So it depends. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is just ask questions. Ask oh yeah, so I, yeah. that means oh this is really quite enlightening. That means I can go in and ask for vaccine for sixteen and eighteen. Yes, I believe so. And I, I think it's, I, I think that one is um oh, I'm trying to remember the name. There are three that I I know offhand, Glentisil or something. Um, but you can always ask. Don't think too hard. Whenever you remember the name, just come and put it down in the screen. Because we're going to be watching and watching. It's going to be here. And so we're going to be watching and watching and watching. Yes? Yeah. So that we know what it is we're doing. Um, Someone says, oh, 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 nah, okay, all right. Someone says, this reminds me of my dearest, lovely friend, sister, whom we lost to cervical cancer on the 29th of September, 2014. Wow. Um, Adeba, your Janet, may your friend's soul continue to rest in peace. Um, mm. I wish your friend was alive to hear all of this now because I know that she would have become a very good advocate for this. Uh, thank you for remembering her. And then please continue to keep her memory alive by sharing this stream and telling everyone you know all yeah. that you know about cervical cancer. Thank you. Angel says... Thank you for this awareness. I've learned something new and educative. Thank you, Angel. Please share, share, share the stream so that we can get more women learning and taking care of themselves. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, something you were already um, talking about. I'm going to ask you to tell us, yeah? Are there any symptoms that we should be aware of, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, there are also lifestyle changes that we can make as women that could help us reduce um, reduce the risk of developing um, cervical cancer. Yeah. Okay. So before I go into that, I've just looked in my notes. Um, um, there are three different types. Of, um, so just ask your sir, your healthcare provider. Gardasil mm -hmm. is um, one that protects against nine different strains of HPV. Then there's um, Cervix that protects against two strains. And yeah. then there's another one. Um, da, 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 da. 
Then there's another, okay, so there's two types of Gardasil. One protects against nine, and then another one protects against four strains. So just ask your, you know, ask your service provider. And then the one you take will also determine um, how many of it you take. So like, for instance, I took Cerevix um, six years ago, and um, I, had, I had to take three doses at separate intervals. And my daughter, because she's never been sexually active, um, she took um, two doses. So young children are meant to take two doses. And when I say young children, usually we advise from about 10, you know, so they take two doses. When my daughter took hers, she was 10. So she took two doses and um, I took three. And even though I did take the vaccine, I'm meant to be screening every, you know, every now and then. Do you remember why? <laughs> yes, because it takes a long time to show up exactly what it is exactly. so you must keep checking so it doesn't exactly. steal up on you when you're sleeping exactly I mean, the only thing we like to happen when we're sleeping is that we should be making money when we are sleeping i know we right to sleep and wake up and then we see that we now have cancer so exactly exactly yeah. so because i have been exposed to you know i've been sexually active for years so i ha i still have to be getting screened every time and i'm going to be getting screened until i'm 65 by the grace of god so yes you know yes if you're sexually active you can take the vaccine but you still need to be getting screened and your children you know encourage you know i encourage parents to get their children vaccinated so at least you know they don't have to worry about that now when we're talking about symptoms Cervical cancer is so kind to present a pre-cancer stage. Guess what? It doesn't have any symptoms until it becomes cancer. Oh, wow. Until it becomes cancer. So all these years, the person is not getting screened. No symptoms or anything. And then all of a sudden, there's um, vaginal dis, um, um, bleeding. All of a sudden, there's, you know, discharge that doesn't smell, you know, that smells foul, different from, you know, what you the person's probably, you know, used to. All of a sudden, pain during sexual intercourse. I'm not saying all these symptoms are not for other, you know, other um, diseases as well. But these are the symptoms that cervical cancer presents. And then when that person, you know, goes to the doctor with all these symptoms and they check the cervix and they see that it's, you know, stage X, Y, Z of cervical cancer. So it doesn't show any symptoms until it becomes cancer. That is why you have to be aware of your body. Get screened regularly. So if there's any abnormal changes, they will be checked and they can be treated then before it becomes cancer. And remember, it doesn't become cancer until, you know, 10 or so years later. But the pre-cells will be showing their faces and then, you know, once a pre-cancer a pre cell is detected, treatment, but symptoms, proper symptoms, the, you know, pain during sexual intercourse, um, discharge, bleeding, even in between periods, um, what's the other thing? Um, lower back pain. Mm. Lower back pain. <laughs> you know, that's when it's now cancer. That's when it is cancer. I'm sure a lot of you can see me saying, mm. everybody, everybody has those symptoms at the moment. It might not be, oh, <laughs> I better make, I better say that it might not. Yes, be. I know. You, you know, you know, the funniest thing we all carry these yeah. smartphones and then we just quickly Google the thing, quack, 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 and then these little thumbs pop out and then we now become, um, um, self-made, yeah. self-taught self doctors. doctors. <laughs> and when thinking things, that this is all the good. symptoms she's mentioned could be evident in you and not even be related to cervical cancer yeah. depending on your yeah. age yeah. you know because i mean yeah. you could have painful intercourse if you are going through menopause and you have dryness in your vagina you know so it's not if that is happening to you and you're menopausal you now say chai cancer no cancer. no you know? so there's no point putting in fear that yes. you do not have any um basis for mm -hmm. you know and um, like when she was saying back pain, I was like, hmm, and that's because my back pains. <laughs> that's because my back pains me. But you see, I do my tests and they haven't come back to me for anything. I just even finished doing my animals, you know, in um, last weekend. And mm. so they, 
they didn't come back to me with anything. So yeah, that means that something else is responsible for the pain in my back. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What I like about Opie with Ezine is that we give you real facts and we 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 actually tell you things that we have experienced. You mm. see, I like the way Dr. Tewa said, I took this vaccination six years ago. My 10 year old daughter has taken it. This is someone who is intentional and about preventive medicine. Frankly, dear women, the cost of healthcare right now is mm. off the <laughs> roof. Mm. If you <laughs> don't get sick, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, not get sick. So it's better we all go on preventive care. Yes, right yes. now, whatever we can do to prevent us from becoming ill, let's better do it. Listen, I was in the hospital last weekend and the doctor was saying to me, let me look for a cheaper variation of this medicine for you because it's gone off the roof. I didn't ask, doctor, you see, because he <laughs> knows that <laughs> the way things are going, People will not be able to afford some. So he said, let me. I... So women, go and do that prevention now. Yes. You don't want to get to where they say to you is free cancerous or it's cancerous. Yes, you know, that is when uh, all your life savings and everything will just go and you don't want to get there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to ask you next, Dr. Tewa. Are there any lifestyle changes mm -hmm. that we can do as women to ensure that we are preventing the possibility mm. of getting cervical cancer. cancer um yes there are different lifestyle changes that we can that we can put into place and um i think it goes with everything everything health you know well balanced diet not you know pumping yourself with um refined food well-balanced diet yeah. at the cost of food right now. <laughs> we have to try. We have to try. Even if you're making that, um, that um, what's it called? That vegetable stew, you know, and you're eating a lot of it that has a lot of the nutrients. I always, always say this to people that a well-balanced diet, I feel like it's, it's easy. And the reason I say it's easy because, you know, a well-balanced diet, it's supposed to be quarter carbohydrate, quarter protein half vegetable half of your plate vegetable if you pile your veg your food with you know um a furry roll um ugu um um tete spinach all of those you know all of those vegetables and you're eating small portion of eba or pounded yam and then obviously your meat is there you're eating a healthy diet a well-balanced diet but you know, we, we the, the world has trained everybody to always do things the other way around. You pack mm -hmm. it full filled with rice, and then the the okay, yeah, you have two meats. Although some people even eat meat as much as the rice, <laughs> so to speak, and no vegetables, nothing whatsoever, no veg, no shoko, no tete, no ugu, no you know, no Empty vegetables. Pie. So lifestyle changes includes, you know, eating healthy. Lifestyle changes include drinking water as regularly as possible, as often as possible. Lifestyle changes, you know, smoke, smoke less. Stop smoking if or you don't can. smoke at all. <laughs> smoke at all. <laughs> lifestyle changes, you know, limit the sexual partners you have. Lifestyle no changes. Ah, I've been out. <laughs> You know, lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes also include, you know, just you taking supplements, vitamins that would boost your immune system, you know, that would help with the, with the you know, with everything going on around you. I mean, going on within you. Those are the kind of lifestyle changes that we need to invite. Because whether we like it or not, you know, something's going to happen at some point. If it's not diabetes, it's probably high blood pressure, you know. And then exercising as well. Exercising. We eat all this food and we're not active. We're not going out there to, you know, to, to, to move our body. And obviously, you know, one thing that I call the foundation of everything is the mindset. The mindset. If you feel you're going to be ill, I'm sorry. You Actually, I'm not sorry. You're right. If you think something is going to happen to you, 
it will happen to you. And this is me wearing my hat as a men mindset stylist now. If you think it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If you think because somebody in your family had it that, you know, automatically it'll happen to the person, it will. But if you, if you think that, you know, it's not going to happen to me, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to love myself because we all say that we love ourselves. But do, do we really love ourselves? Because if we love ourselves, we will be eating a, a healthy meal. If we really if we love, love ourselves, ourselves we will do the internal work. We'll do the internal what work. we do is the external one. So we paint our faces, we wear those designer clothes, no. we carry designer bags, no. we wear the designer shoes, we put on the jewelry, and we begin to shop. You know, um, yes. a pharmacist told me last week, you know, when I was asking, I said, do I look healthy? And she says, you know, I can't tell looking at you because you look good. Mm -hmm. However, I need to investigate your inside exactly to be able exactly. to know whether you look healthy or not. Or not. And that's, and that's where the love starts from. The love needs to start from the inside, you know. Yes, I know. Um, one day I was sitting down in my house and eating, and I was eating raw onions and tomatoes. And I said, Chai, if my mother was alive now, she will turn around and say, Isn't it that you? Because as a child, if you give me food, I will scatter it and pick out the whole onions one by one, chuck it, pick out the whole tomato that my eye can see, chuck it. Now, I actually got tomato, <laughs> sliced it myself, sliced onions onto it, and I was um, chewing it. it. Because you see, um, we've gotten to that point in life where it's... It's important to stay alive to do the things you want to do. Yep. You know, if yep. you still want to go ahead and do some things in this life, then you've got to be alive. Yeah. From the inside of your mind, yep. which will now, you know, galvanize your body to follow it to where you want to go to. Otherwise, um, we'll look pretty and then we'll be yeah. sick. And I we mean, don't want that as women. No, you what's the point of working hard to make all this money? And then at the end of the day, the person is nursing an illness. No, you know, they, no not even nursing. At the end of the day, you spend the whole money that you made exactly. that you want to rock your life to now be maintaining the... Ah, 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 ah. When you should have maintained... You know, and I always say this to people as well. Look for what you like to eat. Not talking about food. And just make mm -hmm. it nice so that you can, you know, you can bear to eat it. Mm -hmm. Because being healthy is everything. Health is wealth. Being healthy is everything. You're very right. And I'm speaking from experience. Mm. You know, when you hear it, it looks like a cliche. Mm -hmm. Health is wealth. You know, you're not mm -hmm. be saying, what does that even mean? Until you experience it. Then yeah. you know that whoever said that yeah. <laughs> knows what they, you know were, what they were talking about. about. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. I and we don't all have to experience it for us to make a turn around. So let exactly. us take Dr. Tewa's advice and begin to live differently. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, the way I now put it is I have chopped enough um enough enough mede mede. We have done those things. Yeah, we've done those so things. Let us start correcting now, you know, because honestly, I think I think the, the thing. How, man, I, how can we get to 65 and discover that we have cervical cancer, for instance? No. If, 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 if God forbid, let it come when we're like 30, then we can deal with it. We have the strength. We have everything. I'm at 65? No. So we need to now start planning for our 70-year-old life. You know, how yeah. we're going to arrive there. And then they will say, 70 looks good on you. Mm -hmm. You know? And then that will not just be somebody paying you a compliment superficially. That would be because you actually look good, yeah. you feel good on the inside. Exactly. And you are saying that there's nothing that is wrong with you beyond normal old age issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dr. Okay, Tell, our time is running out on us as um, usual when you're having um, um, fun. Fun. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to ask you, is there... Um, I think I'm going to ask two questions together. Is there a race that is uh, an ethnic group that cervical cancer is predominantly known or associated with? And secondly, 
is it genetic? Does genetics have something a role to play? Um, Why are you saying my mother had it? Well, so the thing is, some cancers, and I think it's similar to cervical cancers as well, you know, mm -hmm. if the mom had it, it's possible. It's possible, but it's not a hundred percent. Okay. It's not a hundred percent, you know, not like breast cancer because, you know, breast cancer, you know, the history of the family can go into play or high blood pressure, those kind mm -hmm. of things can go into play. But then again, in saying that, that's not to mean that if the person is not taking proper care of themselves, they, you know, they now become that person that breaks that generational thing. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So because, you know, somebody in the family had it doesn't mean that that person is going to have it. You choose what you want to have, you know, what you want to believe about yourself and make sure that your lifestyle embodies that eating well, balanced diet, fruits, vegetables, you know. And I know you said earlier that in this economy, blah, blah, blah. I am still going to say yes. Yes, in this economy, but we can still afford vegetables, you know. We can still buy a little bit and then just make sure that we're eating food that are highly nutritious. We can decide that we're not buying ashebi this year and use all the ashebi money and buy exactly vegetables. and buy vegetables. Let's yeah. invest on things that will extend our lives here. Exactly. On Earth, you know? Exactly. So, so uh, HPV, I mean, sorry, cervical cancer is more, you know, HPV causing, and it's as you've been exposed, as the person has been ex exposed to it. You know, yes, it might have a, a bit of genetic whatnot to it, but you know, I would say that. I'm of a um, I'm of a uh, I'm of a school of thought that let's leave genetics to what it is. You change your own lifestyle, mm -hmm. yeah. Change your own lifestyle and be the person that breaks that generation or whatnot. Now, in terms of you know whichever what race that it's um it's prevalent in and things like that. So, I'm inclined to say that um because it's something that affects women. For cervical cancer especially, I mean, breast cancer, we know that it affects more black women. But for cervical cancer, I think the reason it affects a lot of black people or a lot of Africans in Africa is because we're not, we don't readily have the screenings. So in other countries, like in England, for instance, you know, you do your pap smear every three years from the age of, you know, I started doing my pap smear, I think from, I think it was 22 or something. You know, they send you a letter and, um, you know, if you're not doing, if they send you a letter once, they send you a letter twice, they send you a letter three times, you're not replying, they give you a call and tell mm. you that it's important that you have to come to go to get screened. You have to do your pap smear. But in Africa, we don't have that culture as yet. And the reason I'm saying as yet is I'm, I'm an optimist. And I believe that soon as God lives, we will have a system where screening is mandatory and free as well for people. And the vaccines also become free for children. I mean, we've even started that. Um, Nigeria um, um, gave free vaccines to, okay, small, three million um, children, but that was done free. So we've started. So I think it's prevalent in you know Africa because the screening is not readily done. That's why there are more deaths especially even in the rural, rural area. In fact, I'm not even going to say especially in the rural area because we did a survey in Lagos at the Palms, you know, educated people. We spoke to them, asked them about, you know, if they've been screened for cervical cancer. You know, some people will say, oh, no, when I go abroad, I'll do it. Oh, my doctor mentioned it. Well, I didn't think it was important. Yeah. Educated people. <laughs> So I think it's yeah, women. this is low. This year, <laughs> we need to be intentional. You see, they say knowledge is um, knowledge is um, power, but no, apply knowledge. knowledge. Yes, that is <laughs> power. Yeah. You might know something and you do nothing about it. It's useless to you. So yeah. if you know that you should, please just go. And you know something I've realized, um, Tewa. Mm. I've realized that our body actually gives us signs and our minds tell us things, mm. you know, but we just are not quiet enough to grab it, you yeah. know, because the moment you start feeling, maybe I should go to the hospital, then you should. Then you should. Yeah. You should. Yes. Our don't inner voice voice say, don't, don't self-medicate. Don't wish it away. Just go. Go. 
Yeah. Because the earlier you yeah. know, the earlier yeah. you can get help to yeah. get better. Yeah. In everything, nearly every in everything. It says early detection saves it's lives. Mm -hmm. If you know something early, then you start out early. Somebody who starts in the morning will be done and still have time to rest than somebody who decides yeah. to do the night version of the stuff. So exactly. women, for somebody on this call today, this is your reminder to go right now and make an appointment to get yourself tested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the reason why you're here. Yeah. And it's for you to also carry this message to your family, your immediate constituency, and then you can make a post about it on Facebook. January is Cervical Cancer, cancer Awareness, Awareness Month. Month. Yes. And remember yes. that the team is what? Learn, prevent, and then screen. And screen. How difficult can that be for you to just put up as your own give back to yes. your community of women it's not mm -hmm. very difficult so mm -hmm. i expect to see a lot of it going on right after we tee off on this conversation let's help ourselves let's educate women let's educate tell ourselves every awesome lady tell exactly. every awesome lady in your life okay so finally um mm -hmm. before we round up today boss some myths for us because you see i think that part of the reasons why we don't talk is actually fear I yeah. know that you know you've been hearing all these myths. So bust some myths for us today so that we can go out of here with freer minds, minds <laughs> that are receptive to, to doing the right things. Um, myths, myths, myths. Some one of the myths that comes to mind is that um doing the pap smear or getting getting screened is scary. I always say this that if you can have sex, you can get screened. <laughs> yep, I agree. <laughs> huh? Yes, this is metal going in, in terms of the pap smear. Um, they use, uh, what's it called? Cochlear, uh, the name, you know, yes, they have to, you know. One put a, silver steel like yes. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they put it in you. Yes, it's cold. But it's five minutes of discomfort. Or so less. Or less. Depending on if they <laughs> depending on if they find your cervix quickly. And the mm -hmm. reason I laugh is because um three years ago, I'm due for a, a pap this year. Three years ago, I went to get my seven, my pap smear done. And guess what? So for the past um two or three pap smears I've done, they couldn't find my cervix. <laughs> No joke. So the lady, so mine took longer than five minutes. <laughs> but sorry but, to cut it. You know, I kept but, quiet and I was looking at you. I was saying, should I tell the story or should I not tell the story? But please listen, tell the story because I can't well, be the only one. That I was the story the so that's why he pushed your mouth. <laughs> you know, I went for a pap smear <laughs> at a very, 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 very high-end hospital. <laughs> I sat in there. For hours, what seemed like hours on end, they couldn't find my cervix. So it's not only me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> they couldn't find my cervix. I'm not even done. They now said they couldn't find the ox. And I'm like, is there an ox inside of my body? <laughs> ah, oh, my goodness. Anyway, I was now scheduled for a minor surgery to find the ox because they now said that my cervix was inverted. And I said to them, inverted bowel. So if it's inverted, how do I menstruate? Does the blood go up exactly. and then go and down? Then <laughs> oh, sugar. You know what? I did you actually know? submit myself for this investigation. No. Seriously? I did actually, yeah, so I did submit myself for this investigation. I went under local anesthesia. They were there. They were searching. They were going up and down. But the Lord God Almighty, who is on the throne all the time for his children, made sure they were all blind. They couldn't get inside of me. So after like an hour of going on and on and on, my friend, who is now late, who was with me, Augusta Wakama, told enough. 
What is it you are looking for that you cannot find? Look at the woman that you gave Anastasia. She's waking up and you've not found. <laughs> really? And that was how they took all their gadgets and everything. And I came to. And I said, okay, are we done here now? Am I okay now? Have you been able to do all? And they were all staring at me like, uh, I don't even understand. Anyway, long and short, my friend sprang me out of that place. There was no GSM, so we couldn't tell anybody this story as at the time. So we just went, and I went back to my house. And then she broke it down for me, and I'm like, really? But guess what? Down the line, I found a doctor. Dr. Nzebu, who is married to my friend and my sister, Ngozi Nzebu. And I just went into his clinic, mm -hmm. and on his examination table... Less than five minutes. He found he it. Expertly found the cervix that we went to look for surgically. And he conducted a pap smear. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I wrote about it on Facebook. I shared about it oh, far really? and wide. Yes. You know, oh. to say to people, um, when you go for this stuff, yeah, if they're doing something that doesn't also seem right to you, yeah, tell them to stop them. And then get a second opinion. Yeah. There are people who have been gynecologists, doctors who know better, who know how to find services. My yeah. cervix, I, I did imaging at the end of the day. My cervix was sitting down proper. Yes, I agree I was fat and all of that. But, I mean, that does not mean that you should not tell me what was not there. You yeah. know? So, when I was now saying, should I share this? But I said, okay, do your show and go home. But you started it <laughs> and I'm seconding it that, yes. I'm also on that table where unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. But we must continue to do what is right yeah. for ourselves. We have to. We have it's our to. health. It's and our we health. have to live right. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the cervix is somewhere. It's just that it might, you know, sometimes be difficult to see because it might have gone up. I mean, my last child is um 17 years old. So we didn't have any reason to, you know, come out and do what not. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just there somewhere. But it was eventually, it was eventually found. But that was, wow. you know, that was, that was very, that was, a, that, that was the first for me. And I was quite shocked. I'm like, ah, miss, you know, cervix, you know, hiding. That, that's what <laughs> it means, that your cervix is hiding. Yes, my one is bad. Yeah, so one of the myths is that you know it's it's scary, it's painful. You know, some people say that it's painful. I would, you know, like I said earlier, if you can have sex, then it's fine. Just you know, zero your mind out of it. The only thing that happens is you know, once the iron rod goes in, the the thing to do the to open up the cervix, it's cold, yes, and yeah, you're conscious of the fact that it's metal. But I mean, or plastic, but that's just it. Another myth is um, cervical cancer is not preventable. No, it's preventable. And I say it again, cervical cancer is preventable. It's preventable when you're screening regularly. It's preventable when your lifestyle cho choices are great for you. It's preventable if you get vaccinated. It is highly preventable. In fact, they say that it's 100% preventable because when a precancer cell presents itself, precancer cells pre, it's not cancerous, it's pre, which means it can be treated, which means it's not cancer yet. When it becomes cancer is when all sorts of things now get into play. And you know what they say, if you, you know, if anybody, everyone out there, do your research, cancer spreads. You know, then it begins to spread to all, even parts that it has no business with. It Going starts to, yeah, it starts spreading towards that. So that means that it's not preventable. It's you know, let's debunk it. It is preventable. Just make sure that you're getting screened. Um, what other myths? What other myths? What other myths? Um, okay, another myth I would say. Some people say, "Oh, I'm a virgin." I can't get cervical cancer or I haven't had, um, I haven't had um, penetrative sex and I can't have cervical cancer. Let me say this to you, you know, whichever other sex that you've had, even if it's not pre pre penetrative, as long as the person is carrying a form of strain of HPV, you could, could, I'm not saying definito, I'm saying could potentially, you know, get it. So just get screened. 
get screened. I mean, it's all well and good if you're a virgin because we know for sure that, okay, yeah, you've, you know, the cervix hasn't come in contact with it, but there are all, the, all the other forms of sexual contact and body and sexual fluids being exchanged. So just get screened anyway. Um, what other means? <laughs> I think that's it that I can think of now. It's 100% preventable. It's, um, yes, it might be uncomfortable, but it's not painful, you know? And um, yeah, yeah, I think those are the ones I can think of now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Kella. Thank you for gracing our show today. You're welcome. Your passion is quite infectious. And I know that many women listening to you today will definitely schedule a screening for themselves. Please and also take advantage of your own upcoming free screening yes. for cervical yes. cancer. Please, could you give us the details again as again. we taper off? Okay, so we're doing our free screening on the 16th of February in Mushi Local Government. We're going to be putting all the information on our Instagram page, which is at EMAC, EMAC, E M A C underscore Cervical Cancer Foundation. And also, all the information you need about cervical cancer is present on our website, which is www.smearitafrica.com. And as you can see, Miss Isabel is there is on her face. Good, 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 good. Thank you also for all that you do and represent for the women yes. folk. May you never get tired and may your way yes. always be fulfilling and keep impacting. Fantastic. Thank you. Amen. 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 And to you too. <laughs> so dear phenomenal woman, let's recap our key takeaways from today's show, shall we? First of all, educate yourself about cervical cancer and its risk factors. Mm -hmm. Second, focus on preventing by getting vaccinated, practicing safe sex, and reducing your exposure to risk factors. And finally, prioritize regular screenings to catch any potential issues early on. It's crucial for your health and your peace of mind. Yep. Remember, the fear of being screened is much smaller than the fear of developing cervical cancer without timely intervention. Mm. So ditch the fear. Let's do the needful, ladies. Mm. Knowledge is power, we are told, but applied knowledge saves lives when it comes to cervical cancer prevention. So women, like we say on this show, act now. Yep. It is act. only action that changes things. Act yes. now. This is where we wrap today's edition of Up You With AZN. It's been another amazing one. Please follow us on all our social media platforms that help you with AZNA and put on your notification. Make sure you get copies of our books and don't forget to be a part of our amazing community. Let's continue these conversations. Uh, big up to everyone that is involved in creating this magic every week. Starting with you, our dear listeners, our guests, and the amazing OPU team. Until next time, stay informed, stay healthy, and together let's fight against cervical cancer. My name is Ezine Kufre Kanem and it's up you. <laughs> Bye for now. I see you, Bolanle Lasisi Oladimeji. I see you, Juliet Onyewu. I see you, Adebayo Janet. I see everyone on the stream. God bless you for coming. Please share and share and share. Love you, Dr. Tewa. God bless you. Thank and bye. You. Amen. And you too. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.